today's video, I'm going to show you a technique to recreate and reimagine any image with stable diffusion in CompUI using unsampling and control nets. Right, so the first thing we need to do is install some custom nodes. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and grab the CompUI control net auxiliary nodes. And so this is a series of preprocessors which will allow you to grab depth maps, the line art, and other masks from your images that you can use to uh, have control net guide the generation. And there are uh, instructions to install that you can follow here and find what works best for your setup. The next node that you're going to need is the ComfyUI noise set of nodes from Blender Neko. There are some pretty interesting nodes in here that can be useful for other use cases, but we're only interested in the unsampler today. And what the unsampler does is it basically runs the sampler in reverse. So you can get the noise that may have generated that image, even if it's a real image that wasn't actually created by generative AI. The reason that's useful is because it allows us to recreate an image and then make modifications to that image while maintaining much of the source. Let's just go ahead and walk through this workflow here and I'll explain what each node does and then we'll play around with it a little bit. So to start off, we're just loading a base image. This is an image I've created with SDXO of some man with a beard wearing a hat. And we're using 1.5, SD 1.5 with the custom VAE here. Um, just found that that gives really good results with this method. And you can also use your own custom SD 1.5 models that you may have downloaded uh, and experiment with that. But I have found that this base model actually outperforms uh, some of the models I tend to prefer for other applications. So what we're doing here is we have our base image and we're converting that into a uh, latent and we are feeding that latent into our unsampler. And we're also feeding this text prompt, which is just a description of our base image. So we want to try and describe our base image as accurately as possible without being too wordy. You don't necessarily need this in the negative prompt, uh, but it can help, especially later on when we get to reimagining images. And that runs into our unsampler. And then what our unsampler does is it's, as I said earlier, just trying to create the noise that may have generated this image. And then what we're doing is we're running it through some control nets. So right now we're just using this depth map. I found this works really well for most applications, especially for recreating an image. Um, and also later for some things we'll do when we're reimagining an image. And we have low strength and we're also only uh, applying this control net halfway through the generation because we really just need to guide the noise we've already grabbed we've already grabbed the noise from this original image and in some cases control net might not even be necessary but i've just found that there are instances where it starts to get away from the original image and control net does a good job at just wrangling things in a little bit Next thing that we're doing is we have our destination prompts. Uh, and so right now these are identical to the source prompts because we're just recreating the image. But later when we reimagine, we'll adjust that a little bit. Next, we're going into our sampler where we're going to actually be generating our final image. And uh, you can see we have a guidance of one just as we have in the sampler or the rather the unsampler. The unsampler should always have a guidance of one. Uh, and when we're recreating an image, we're going to keep the guns in the sampler at one as well. We then just generate the image. And I've already run this. So you can see here is our original image. And here is our recreated image. And it's important to note, this is not image to image. So we're not just encoding and then decoding the image without applying any noise. We are actually getting the noise from the original image, passing it through a control mat, and recreating that same image in our own uh, generation. The reason that this might be useful is when we want to start reimagining the image and we want to make small changes, 
without losing our source. And so let's look at one potential use case right now. Let's remove his beard. So we want to we just get rid of this beard. And so the way that I like to think about this is you always want to have the source prompt as accurate as possible. And when we're talking about reimagining, you want to make sure that whatever you're trying to change is described in the source prompt. So we want to make sure we have with a beard. We do have that. That's great. So now we want to take a look at our destination prompt. And our destination prompt is what we want our end image to look like. So we don't want him to have a beard. So we're going to get rid of with a beard in our positive destination prompt. And we're going to actually move it to our negative destination prompt. So now here in our destination, the idea of with a beard is being subtracted, basically trying to remove the concept of with a beard from our image. We'll go ahead and see how that does. And now that we're making some modifications, we want to start with adjusting the guidance at first. So we're going to bump it up to two. I don't think this is going to make much of a change, uh, but we'll just kind of go through it so you can see what it might look like. Okay, so now he's got more of a goatee. We've kind of removed the side burns here, but he still has a beard. So there's a couple of different ways that we can address this now. We can either continue to increase the guidance value. We can lower the strength of the control mat, or we can adjust our destination prompt. I recommend adjusting the destination prompt first. And so there's a couple ways that you can do that. But I think what we're going to try to do here is just add clean shaven. Okay. And then must run this again and see what we get. Okay, we didn't have much of a change. So let's let's go ahead and bump the guidance up. Let's bump it up to three, see what we get. Okay, and now we can see he's clean shaven. And if we compare that to our original image, not much else has changed. Very similar face, very similar attire, even some of these details in the chin remain in both images. But he's got no beard. So another thing that we can do is we can change the style of the image. So let's say we want to make a cartoon version of this gentleman here. So we're going to go ahead and copy the source prompt back into our destination prompt so that we're starting from the same place. And now we want to change the style. So we can see we've already described a close-up photo. So we're going to leave that in the source prompt. Again, the source prompt should always accurately describe the source image. And we're going to go up here and we're going to change the destination prompt to say cartoon. Typically with styles, you might want to apply extra strength to the tokens that you're trying to amplify. So you do that with uh, parentheses. So we're going to put it in double parentheses and we're going to say cartoon. Okay. And we'll leave everything else the same as it was, and we'll just run it and see what we get. Okay, so we have this sort of interesting kind of cartoon situation here. There's some interesting, uh, almost three-dimensionality to it. So that's because we have this death map here. Something that we can try is we can unbypass this line art control map. And we can see this is going to generate, this has already generated a line art for our image. And that's kind of going to get us closer to what we want to be. So we've now concluded this in our chain of control mats. So we run it first through this depth mask. And then secondly, we're running it through this line art control mask. What we'll do is we'll reduce the strength of the depth mask so that our total strength is what it was before. And we'll see what kind of results we get here. And so you can see now we have a little bit more of an interesting cartoon style. And that's really it. You can just mess around with different prompts, whether you want to change styles, whether you want to change the color of a character's hair, the color of their clothing. If you want to try adding glasses, removing glasses, you just need to experiment with increasing and decreasing the strength of the control nets and adjusting the guidance of the sampler and uh, adjusting your prompts, the destination prompts, and just play around with it and see what you can make happen. And you can also try using different control net models and preprocessors and 
just kind of see what kind of fun, interesting results you can get. So I'm going to go ahead and put links to uh, all the resources you need where you can get the control net models and these custom nodes, as well as a link to download this custom workflow I've made and also where you can get to the checkpoints and the VAE that I've used in this workflow. So hope you enjoy. Enjoy.